All right, welcome to this is practical alternative B on I filler. So this is going to be question three on the this is practical and this is going to be my first part, part one of this video. Okay, I already did something similar to this, but quite different from this in the previous, I think it was in 2022. So I'm going to share the link of that video on this to give you another uh, variety of what you can get from this experiment. So uh, this is the first part of this. I'm going to perform another experiment on this. Then I'll also share the link of that on, on the description of this video, together with the one that I've done in 2022 or thereabout. I'm going to share that at the description of this video. So you can click on the description to check out all other variety of the possible questions that you can get from this physics practical. So before I continue, do not forget to subscribe, like and share this video and also make your comment on as it regards uh, the video. So let us uh, move on. So, so as, as it is as constant, we always read through the instructions and that will help you a lot. So as you can see here, we have a stand this represents two pivots, which represents uh, the resource and the Libet clamp here. So we have threads of the same length. Then we have a meter row. We also have a thread here and uh, a mass M here. Then we have the uh, D. The D is the distance between the two threads. Okay, this uh, practical, I think it was performed in 2022 by physics practical or uh, network. I can't uh, really get that again, but this uh, experiment was performed then. So you, here you are. Provided with a set of masses, two meter rolls, a piece of thread, two retort stand and clamp, a stopwatch, split core, and a weighing balance. So the weighing balance is to determine the weight of the meter roll. Okay, so use the diagram above as a guide to perform the experiment. Measure and record the mass M of the meter roll. Suspend the meter roll whose mass has been measured by means of two vertical strings of length L equals 80 cm. Make the separation between the threads D equals to 80 cm. Then suspend a mass M equal to 20 grams from the midpoint of the meter row. So the midpoint of the meter row is going to be determined by a knife edge. And the mass of the meter row can be determined using uh, the, um, me uh, the instrument used for measuring the mass. Okay, so you can do that. And most of the metal rows that you have around have the masses around 120 grams. So you can use uh, those uh, masses, those masses, uh, as that as the mass of the metal row. Yes, okay, suspend a mass M 20 grams from the midpoint of the metal row and means of a thread such that the distance between the mass and the row is H is equal to 15 cm. So the length of this is going to be 15 uh, cm. Displace the end of the metal root in the horizontal plane in opposite direction. Release the root to perform horizontal oscillation. Determine the time t for 20 oscillations. Evaluate the period t, t square, and t inverse. Repeat the procedure for four other values of m is equal to 30 gram, 50 gram, 70 gram, and 100 grams, keeping the values of h, d, and l. Constant, so it means that the length of this will probably be 80, 80 cm between this and this, and the length of this will remain uh, 80 cm. Then the length of the thread that holds the mass to the meter row will also be 15 cm permanently. So plot the graph with t square on the vertical axis and m on the horizontal axis. Determine the slope of the graph. So this is my table. My table is going to look like, so I'm going to have the mass in grams, and I'm going to have the 20 gram mass. Next is 30 gram mass. Now I have 50 gram mass. I have the 70 gram mass and the 100 gram mass. Then again, I'm going to have time T1 in seconds to measure the first period. And I'm going to have time T2 in seconds to measure the second period. Time then t is going to be t1 plus t2 divided by 2 measured in seconds. So the units <laughs> must always be included. And we have t is equal to t divided by the number of oscillation 
you have t squared evaluated and s squared so from here so uh the next thing we have to do now what i have to tell you is that the time for this is is going to be when you're taking 20 oscillation it's going to be um very lengthy so what you're going to do is this when you take the time for t1 you can just adjust it a bit by removing plus or minus 0 0.4 and take it to this side but what you're going to do is this in this experiment i'm actually going to take five oscillations i'm going to take the time for five oscillation then multiply it by four that's going to give me the time for 20 oscillation so that's going to save my time from this experiment so let's uh, move on to the practical and carry out the experiment proper okay so these are my setup so i have two record stand and uh, two threads tied to the record stands so this is one and this is the other thread tied to the other record stand so what we're going to do is to get the center of gravity to get the center of gravity of the metal rule so I take this so we can take this and place it here then we'll adjust this through this okay. okay it's difficult to balance that more but i'll take it at the 51 cm mark okay so i'll take it at the 51 cm mark so what i'll now do is to take my thread this thread is 15 cm long so i'll place it through the center of gravity of the metal rod at the 51 cm mark so i'm going to leave it permanently on the 51 cm mark so that's where i'm going to leave it then i'm going to place them on the retort stand on the uh, string on the retort stand so i'm going to place this on this now this will be placed at the 10 cm mark on this side and this will be placed on the 10 cm mark on this but first of all i'll have to take the length of the string so the length of the strings would be the length of 80 on this so just take your ruler on this so we can remove the uh, replace the ruler first remove the ruler and measure 80 cm on this so from the bottom from the bottom here i'm going to measure 80. so this is 70 this is 80. so what i just have to do is to wrap this and roll it on this on the 80 cm mark so i'm going to roll it so that's how i'm going to be doing it roll it on it so that's 80. then i'll measure 80 on the other string again so i'm going to measure 80 on this This is 80 here, so I'll roll it on it, 80. So these are my measurements. So I'm going to put my meter rule back. So I can put my meter rule back on the string. So the idea is to catch up the number of oscillation. So I'm going to place this on this. Then place this inside of this. Okay? So I am placing them at the 90 cm mark because the distance between the two of them will permanently be will permanently be 80. So I'm going to place this at the 10 cm and then I adjust the record stand and this will be at the 80 cm i also adjust it so that i can balance them up then i'll place this permanently at the 
51 cm that I measured earlier on. And I'll use a cello tape to pull it on that point there on this. So I'm going to fix it on it to hook, be able to so that it will not shift up. And occasionally always look at the edge to ensure that they remain in that position. So this. So we are all set. Now we can take our values that we are using is this one. So we have to put the masses now. So the first mass is 20 gram. So I'm going to put a 20 gram on this. So I'll put the 20 gram here. And then set it into 20 oscillation. But I'm not setting it to 20 oscillation. I'm going to set it into 5 oscillation. Then after we will multiply it by 4 to get 20. So that's how I will save my time. So let's go. 1, go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 8.81. Then I'm going to multiply that by 4. That's equal to 35.24. So let's set it into small oscillation again. 5. So I'll go small one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 8.81 again. So 8.81 times 4. That's going to give me 35.24. 42. So now we're going to change the mass. The next mass is 30. So I'm going to add 10 to this. So this is 30 grams. So we set into another oscillation again. So small oscillation, let's go. When it comes back, one, two, three, four, and five. So I got 9.19, so I'm going to multiply that by four. That's 36.76. So I have 36.76. So I'll do it again uh, for the second time. So I'll set it again. Go. One, two, three, four, five. So that's 9.15. So I'm going to multiply that by four. That's equal to 36.60. So I'll reset my clock. Then I add the next mass is 50 grams. So I'm going to remove the 30 gram mass, then I'll place 50 gram on it. So this is 50 gram. Then we'll set into oscillations quickly. So I reset my clock. Five oscillations, then we'll multiply by four. So let's go. Ready? One, two, three, four. 9.25. So I'm going to multiply that by 4. That's 37.00. 37.00. Then I'll reset my clock and take it again. Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 9.09. So I multiply that by 4. That's 36.36. Okay, so the next is 70 grams. So I'm going to add 20 grams to this. So I'm going to add 20 grams to this. So I'll reset my clock. and set it into five oscillations. Go. One, two, three, four, five. That's 9.40. So I'll 
So I multiply that by 4. That's equal to 37.60. Then I will do that again. I'll set my clock. So let's set it again. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five. That's 9.15. So I'm going to multiply it by four. So that's going to give me 36.60. Okay, so the next one is 400 grams. So I'm going to replace this with 400 grams. Okay. So I reset my stop, uh, stopwatch and set it into small oscillations. Small oscillations are better. So my temp position here are fixed on this side and that side. So I'll set this small oscillation and leave. One, two, three, four, five. So that's 9.13. We to multiply that by four. One, two, three, four, five. That's 9.75. So I'm going to multiply that by 4. So that's equal to 39.00. So I'm going to okay, let's go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 9.47. So I multiply that by 4. So that's equal to 37.88. So these are my readings. So I'm going to evaluate. I'm going to evaluate the readings. Then we'll plot the graph if necessary. Okay, so this is uh, another alternative. In this alternative, the mass is attached at the center of the meter roll using a tip, using tip to attach that. So instead of using the rope down to attach the mass, here yeah, we use the tip to attach the mass. And the masses this time around are 30 grams, 40 grams, 50 grams, 60 grams, and 70 grams. Here you have to determine the mass of the metal root. So you can use the principle of moment to determine the approximate mass, or you can use an electronic mass uh, an electronic balance to determine the mass of the meter row. Then set into oscillation. So here we are asked to evaluate t, uh, t, t squared and t minus 2 squared. Okay. Then we are asked to determine the slope and evaluate q is equal to this over this. So it's basically the same, but the only difference is that in this, the mass is placed at the middle. So this is my uh, table for it. So we have the, the mass as usual recorded in grams. So, so we have all of this as the masses. Then we have T1 in seconds, T2 in seconds. T is equal to T1 plus T2 divided by 2 in seconds. Then we have a T is equal to T divided by 20 oscillations. And then we evaluate T squared and also evaluate T raised to power minus 2. And the units given in pass, a second squared. And all of this given so this is basically what you're going to do so it's basically the same thing but just uh, changing the orientation of the mass here